Hey everybody, welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. I'm John Martin. And I'm Dean Riverman. Dean, we're we're pretty uh, tech positive on this show, wouldn't you say? We are. We like tech. We embrace tech. We're tech positive, sure. Yeah, yeah. We you know, we, we get excited about technology. Yes. We we usually have fun feelings about it. I know yeah. every now and then we might be a little cynical. Or maybe I'm a little cynical. I know I tend to be a cynical one of the two of us. <laughs> and, and and there's been a couple of times that I've mentioned having some tech beefs. Yeah. Uh, if I recall, the first one may have been my complaint about the fact that the regional sports networks were at war with the streaming services, making it difficult for us to watch our favorite teams. I do the believe problem it still has not been resolved, mind it, you. It is unresolved, but that might have been the original beef. Yes, I think so. And there are a few we've mentioned off and on since then. But, you know, I decided, hey, let's have an entire episode about our tech beefs. There you go. We just get to kind of just rail about things in the world of tech that just kind of rub us the wrong way, annoy us, just stuff that uh, stuff that just doesn't work the way we should. We think it should. That's right. That's right. And look, our audience is interested in the things that we talk about that are channel related all the time, but they are also interested in, you know, tech beefs and, and these right. types of things that we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's so just, it's, it's like the inverse of Tech Bytes episodes. Maybe this is content that you can have a talking point to discuss with your customers. Like, hey, I was listening <laughs> to my favorite podcast the other week and they were telling me, talking about how much they hate this. Don't you hate that too? I mean, it's that's good. It's good kind yeah. of stuff to talk about with somebody. That's a lot of cool. That's right. So I got a, you, so you got some tech beefs. I got a couple. I do. Yes. I've got, I've got a few of them. You've got a few of them. So we're going to, we're going to get to those in just a moment. We're going to, we're going to beef our way through this episode. We're going to get angry about some stuff cleared off, off of our palates so we can get back to loving the technology that we do love. Uh, all that plus our usual, what's tech connected with us? Something maybe a little more positive. Uh, and of, and of course, uh, you know, we, we will tell everybody how they can get in touch with us and all that stuff, because we want to hear from, from you about some of your tech beefs also. Bingo. Uh, all that, uh, of course, plus our usual stuff. It's time to plug in and get connected. Welcome to the Tech Connect Podcast. It's time to get connected. All right, Dean, let's, let's get into it, man. Let's start talking yeah. about some beefs. Uh, I think you had a few more than I do, so I'm going to let you start well, first. What's yeah. your first tech beef? I don't know. I've got them piling up here. And, and the first one that I got maybe is not a tech-related one. It's a science-related one. Okay. And, okay. And to me, it's under the category of unnecessary studies, right? So, okay. you know, like, you know, you got a lot of universities out there. you got a lot of money just going after endless amounts of studies. Oh, we got to conduct a study on this. we got to prove this, prove that, write a paper right, about right. something, I don't know, whatever. But this one falls under the duh. Do we really need this? So here's the headline. The, the brain processes inanimate objects with face-like qualities in the same manner as real faces, including ascribing emotions to that Im image a new study suggests. And so, you know, so this is, okay. you know, remember the potato chip that looked like Jesus? Or <laughs> right. And the toast and whatever else. Yeah. Sells for yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a million dollars because it's got a face on it. And it's one of these, this, you do not need a study. If you look up in the clouds, everybody has looked up in the clouds one day, yep. and said, you know, that kind of looks like a face or yep. maybe there's an oil stain on the garage floor and it just weirdly <laughs> looks like a face. Why did we need a study for this? Furthermore, why do we need to name it something? This phenomenon, this fancy name is called, and I'm going to kill this. I should have given you this word before. <laughs> it's the periodolia is what this is called. So, of course, scientists at the University of Sydney have found that not only do we see faces in everyday objects, but our brains process objects uh, for emotional expressions, much like we do real faces. Really, we needed a study for this, but but not not what makes this particular study even worse. And you know, this is a tech beef of mine. We're publishing unscientific information. So this study that this periodical <laughs> felt was worthy of publishing whatever an article on the right, right. prize for this study was 17 university students. Now, 
how is that a scientifically you know acceptable? It's seventeen students that probably made some beer money to come in and talk to them about. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, you see faces in this. Do you act emotionally when you see those faces? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, is the answer to both of those. And so what what are we doing here? Do you see my text? Are you less inclined to eat that toast because you see someone's face in it? Like, <laughs> no, actually, I want to eat it more now. You know, like, right. I mean, who knows? But look at this. So now we have a university. Admittedly, I guess this is in Australia, but the, the cost of education and, and universities going, is astronomical. Everybody's going into debt doing it. What are we doing? We're funding silly little research studies like this. I don't know. I just I, I got a beef with that kind. I know it's not tech, but man, it's scientific. And I just think we need to pull our reins in here and spend money on stuff that actually should be studied. Right. Not exactly. You know, not never mind. All, yeah. Never mind health conditions, unsolvable health conditions. Never mind climate change. <laughs> never mind socioeconomic issues. Let's uh, right? let's let's figure out if people see faces when they look at the, <laughs> you know, the the weird drop ceiling, you know, in their house or whatever that, you know, that uh, crumbly kind of drop ceiling people have. Do you see a face up there? I don't know. That's a, that's I mean, a good one. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's right. It's just, to me, it's just a commentary on so many things that uh, uh, could be, one could argue are wrong with the way that we're spending money in parts of our society. I'm not I, against scientific research. I think it's incredibly right, right. important. Just not in this. Fashion. So, so there was nothing about this in any way of like how this could be, you know, I don't know how you could get something useful out of this. No, like, there's no meaningful information that comes out of it. It's just, it's just a validation yeah. of something that we already know. Right, yeah, right. I see something that kind of looks like a face, and all it needs is two dots and a little line, and <laughs> and in somewhat close proximity, my right. brain's going to say, "Oh yeah, that looks like a face." Right. And oh yeah, I might even ascribe an emotion to that. Look, there is. Uh, uh, <laughs> so if you go to Blue Star and go up the back stairway. There is a little chip of paint out on one of the stairs going up, and it kind of looks like a face giving me a little quirky <laughs> smirk. And it's like, I see it every time I go into work, and I didn't need a study. Do you, do you ever talk to it? Do you ever be like, yeah, buddy, me too. <laughs> it's my will. Got you, man. It's, it's right? Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Wilson volleyball with the hand. There you go. Yeah. There you oh, go. Oh, my God. All right, man. Yeah, so that's, what, a, that's a weird study. Give me your first beef. All right, so here's my first one, and it's 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 kind of uh, it's one thing in particular that annoys you, but it also leads to a bit of a bigger problem. So, do you currently have, or have you had in the past, Sirius XM in your vehicle? Yes, I have, and I have okay. purchased the car where it comes with it, and then right. they take it away from you. So, right. yes, which is the case for the most part now. When you get a new vehicle, you get access to it for like three months, and then they take it away if you don't subscribe to it. All well and good. Now, right. back in the day. I did have Sirius for a while in my last vehicle when, you know, this was, you know, pre, I think, you know, I, I, I had a CD player, but, you know, this was like pre streaming services for music. You know, I, like I, I may have had a few different songs here on a device here and there. I had a lot of CDs, but let's be honest, local radio was kind of getting intolerable if you know especially if you're someone who likes a variety of music like i do and i'm sure and i know you do too because you have like what five to ten local stations yep. at least five of which are essentially the same station yep. a lot of them are owned by these you know corporate giants like clear channel and they just play the same top 40 songs over and over and over again tons of commercials awful djs so I was very happy to get away from that and be like, hey, all right, here's. You're not a fan right of the heavy rotation. That's no. the industry term you're looking exactly. for. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, not a fan of that. So I was very happy to get away from that and get Sirius XM and like, oh man, like I can go to a, a Pearl Jam only channel. I can go to a channel that's just hits from the 90s. No ads, no nothing, just nonstop. Like I liked all that. That was great. Now here's the thing. Eventually, you know, I got to the point where my phone could hold a lot more music and I, you know, was able to download a lot more stuff. I got into podcasts. I started to have no reason to listen to any kind of radio anymore. Well, have you ever tried to cancel Sirius XM? No, I haven't. Uh oh. They don't make it easy. At least back then. This was probably like five, six years ago, maybe. Okay. And, and it was a and it was fairly long lasting. This was an issue because my wife had a problem with it too, and she bought a new car. 
canceling it was nearly impossible. And this is a beef that I have just in general is people with any kind of subscription service that has like an ongoing monthly fees. And let's be honest, that's kind of the future of a lot of oh, services. Yes. We talk about it all the time. Especially you know, with our, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Really? Anything yeah. cloud related, anything that's streaming, it's all about, you know, a, a recurring ongoing service. But I find that there's a lot of these companies that make canceling that service extremely difficult. And Sirius was definitely one of them. Like you could log into their online portal and, and mind you, just to even get your account set up and get in there, like you had to have your VIN number for your vehicle. You had to like go to your radio in your car. And there was some specific channel you had to go to and a button to press to actually find your specific like code for your radio. That was just to create your account. And then you do that and you log in. You're like, I would like to cancel my services. Like to cancel, call 1-800-blah-blah-blah-blah-blah. You oh, couldn't okay. even do it you. online. Got it, got so you it. had to call in and it was one of those ones where they make you wait forever. And then the person gets you on the line and you try to cancel. They spend 20 minutes trying to talk you into a better deal or adding more channels or taking some money off. <laughs> but before I, you go, John, are yeah, you exactly. sure? Well, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's the kind of thing where when I was done, I vowed never to use Sirius ever again. I, I, even if if like I lost access to every other form of music or whatever, I would listen to local radio before I would actually subscribe to Sirius ever again. That's and bad. I have to think that's that's terrible customer service. And I wasn't the only one that experienced it. I asked other people about it, like, oh yeah, it's a nightmare. And pe- most people that get to the point where they just don't even bother trying to cancel. So they're paying that recurring monthly fee because they just don't want to go through the hassle of canceling. And that is a horrible business model. That so, is a horrible business Tech model. companies that are embracing subscriptions, smart idea, brilliant, perfect. We tell our VARs that all the time, recurring revenue. Anytime you can do something on a recurring subscription model, do it. But make it easy to, to cancel. Because if you don't, because you know you never know why someone might need to cancel. Like They might need to pause for a little while. Maybe money's tight or something. Right. They might come back in the future. But if you're not giving them an easy way to do that, you make it difficult to cancel. People remember they're not going to come back. Exactly. No, more than a chance, I would say. Yeah, yeah. That's a <laughs> all good right. What's beef. your next one? Well, that actually parlays really well into a beef that okay. I have. So here's my headline on the whole thing: how how networks quest to end password sharing might work. So I was unaware of this, but Net- Netflix just a little while ago surprised the world, right? Right. Saying right. its plans to finally address what they call the rampant practice of password sharing. Right. They're going to start, um, you know, ratcheting down on us plebeians that, you know, that share our passwords with, with, with family members and right. Mom uses it. Daughters use it, whatever. To me, and I'm putting my marketing hat on. I think this move is bad. I think the optics are really bad. I to- So let me give you a little bit more information. I totally get the business case for this, but the optics are terrible. Um, let's say, and this is, this is directly from the chief operating officer over at Netflix. If you've got a sister, let's say, that's living in a different city and you want to share your Netflix with her, that's great. We're not trying to shut down that sharing, but we are going to ask that you pay a little bit more for the ability to share your password with her so she gets the full benefits and value of the service. But we also we also get the revenue associated with that viewing. Come on, dude. At so least they're being honest about what they're trying to do, I guess. Right. So what they're, they're, they've, they've started to pilot this. They, they, they're running it in Peru and Costa Rica and Chile. Why they picked on Latin America, I don't know. But that's where they're, they're starting it there. And the price difference is about $2 to $3 uh, you know, per account right. if you have these add-ons. My beef is this. Look, streaming services are definitely uh, clearly the way of the future. Everybody is already starting to get a little bit fatigued on how many different mm-hmm. services you have mm-hmm. to do, right? I've even started to read some stuff like bring back cable TV because that was the value, right? At least it bundled everything into right. one area and I didn't have to cut a check to 10 different entities to get these streaming right. services. So when you see that and what are you going to do? Oh, you're going to press back even harder and start charging people. Like, Look, if you need to make the money on it, just raise the price a little bit. Now I know they've got some of their analytics and they probably got people on behind them saying, well, you can't do that, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're going to erode your market share. But this one to me is a beef because look, it's, 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 
it's just one of those things that everybody does. So right. just assume a little bit of loss here in the sense that you're not going to be able to charge people for that. Raise your rates. If you need to make up the revenue on it, fine. You can do that in other ways other than this. So I don't know, yeah. man. I didn't I didn't like where this one was going. I'm this yeah, is very yeah, this one's very interesting to me because I heard about this myself. And it's funny because Netflix is also starting to really lose the streaming game to right. other platforms, especially Disney Plus and HBO Max, which have really come out of the gate pretty strong in the last couple of years to really kind of dominate that space. And Netflix is, has been struggling a little bit. They've acknowledged like they're, you know, they're losing some subscribers. They don't give a lot of information about their subscriber numbers or ratings. You know, they'll, they'll throw out some stuff every now and then whenever something's like, this is the most watched series ever on Netflix. And we don't even really know what that means because they're very shady about their numbers and they don't, they don't, they don't have to subscribe to Nielsen, you know, and like That's all right. the Nielsen parameters. Yeah, right. So, but, but it's been pretty pretty well established that they are starting to lose subscribers. You know, people that like pay attention to social media chatter about series and, and, you know, and have done the analytics behind that are seeing a lot less for Netflix than for some of the other services. So I think it's interesting timing that they're trying to do this now. And obviously their thought probably is, all right, well, it's because everyone's password sharing. That's why we're not getting as many new subscribers. But here's the thing. Netflix used to pride themselves on that. Right. They actually, at one point in time, they literally would say, like, hey, go ahead. You know, they, yeah. they even had advertising and marketing around, like, you know, really? sharing their pa- sharing your passwords. Okay, sharing your password is love, or something like that. Like, they used to have literal marketing around that. <laughs> and now they're saying, like, no, 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 you can't do this anymore. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's other services that from the beginning didn't necessarily allow this or have like, you know, location, you know, setups or whatever that keep you from doing it, or you know, it's got to be on the same IP address or something like that. So, like, they're out of the gate. Like, look, we're just not letting this be a thing. Netflix was very permissive about it. And now suddenly they think they can dial that back in and that they're not going to be consequences. Like, come on. Right. I mean, look, I at a minimum have a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, right. I mean, come on. And, and I get it that, you know, they don't want it to, maybe there are some bad cases out there where one password is being used on like a thousand different locations at one time. Yeah. They have the ability, but for an average family, I would say the average Netflix user, like, like us, you know, I've got, Two kids that are in college, so they live remotely from here, and we've shared it right, with them. So right. there are maybe three different households using my uh, using our Netflix blog. That's acceptable, right? I mean, if it was in the ten or twenty or something like, so come up with a rule that says, hey, you can't, you know, if it's being used on more than whatever something reason. Yeah, some kind of a family on. thing, like five people at a time. That's it. Five different there you go. Yeah, streaming you're streams share at a time or something. Way better optics than this. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, this is not, I think this is going to backfire. It's it's funny, that, I mean, because obviously we talk about Netflix as being this huge success story that, you know, broke the model and took down the video the stores. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now they are, they are making the kind of very unsmart steps that those kind of companies made that put them out of business. And, and, and to be honest, also Netflix content just isn't what it used to be. Yeah. They don't have as many I'm not shows. Gonna, that people I'm not are, bash are them. I can't do that. You know, I'm not going to get into the bashing game, but I do, I don't like the move yeah. uh, from a technical standpoint of, of I'm with you on that password sharing. So anyway, well, that parlayed well into yours. So what's, what's your next beef? So my next one is uh, one I think I've probably mentioned maybe on the show a couple of times, but it's a continuous source of just uh, to me on a regular basis. And that is the Apple podcast app and platform. Okay. Now, I know that there are plenty of other podcasters out there that you can use, you know, Dreamcast, all, you know, all these other ones that you can use to, to collate your favorite podcasts into one place and listen to them and build libraries and all that stuff. But, you know, I'm an Apple guy. I've been using Apple Podcasts since the beginning. I've got a massive, you know, library of shows that I listen to and, you know, and, and a lot of stuff that I've downloaded. So it would just, to me, it would just be one of those things like a huge hassle to move elsewhere. Unless someone came along and said, hey, we can literally just take exactly what you've got in pod, Apple Podcasts, export it over to ours and go from there. And by the way, our platform is not going to be wonky. Well, and my beef here is because Apple has... For some reason, with a lot of their last several iOS updates, made significant changes to the podcast platform that mm-hmm. have kind of broken it at times and made mm-hmm. it nearly unusable. So one of the big things they did is they changed the way, like when you listen to a podcast, how it gets marked in, and, and removed from your library. Right. They changed up that kind of stuff. 
And they also like, and when they did that the first time, it literally took like some of my podcasts that I've been listening to for years and have hundreds of episodes. It suddenly took those hundreds of episodes that I've already listened to and just made them all unlistened, unplayed episodes again. Oh, I so suddenly that I have too. Yeah, yeah. So suddenly there's this mat. I suddenly have this massive load of episodes that it's saying I need to listen to like 106 unplayed episodes. I'm like, no, I should only have the last two weeks worth. And like, and they didn't have a good way at the time either to, to manually mark all of those as done. So like, like you had to either just either do them all individually or just deal with it. And yeah, I'm someone who doesn't like, you know, like I'm the guy who doesn't like seeing that dot or number or something. Yes, saying I've got same a certain here. Number of this or right. that. Yeah. And, and that just drove me nuts. You keep your podcast thing clean, right? Yeah. I'm with you. And now that you mentioned all this, I had, there's a couple episodes that I listened to that literally, no doubt, have a, a thousand episodes. And then yeah. all of a sudden they showed yeah. up and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, exactly. Oh. And, and and then on top of that also, my favorite thing with the podcast app has always been the ability to create a queue of the episodes you want to listen to in order. So when you finish an episode, it yep. immediately goes into the next one you have in queue. Well, now finally this got fixed. Some of these problems have got fixed in the last iOS update. But that was a problem where it, what was happening is just the queue would just randomly just get wiped out for no reason whatsoever. The queue, would, my queue would just randomly just disappear. And so, and I, so I'd be listening to an episode of something expecting like, all right, I queued up the next episode of my other favorite podcast after this. And suddenly it would just go into a completely different podcast, like whatever is the latest thing that had been downloaded. Like what, what's this? And I'd go and look and see all oh, that queue that I made of 30 episodes has just been completely erased for no reason. That Dude. was ongoing for like a good six to eight months or so before they finally fixed that. So, oh. I, I, and it just, and now like we find, like I said, some of these problems are kind of fixed. It, you can, you can mark episodes played in mass now, not in a really easy way, but in a, if you're caught up and you just want to say, all right, all leftover episodes, I'm going to mark as played. You can do that. Oh. But it's, there's still issues. There's, like it's a little better than it was. And I haven't had as much beef with it lately, but, it was one of those, you broke something that wasn't broken that everybody seemed to like. And it was one of those things where like, I, I, I got online. I was like, am I the only one that's dealing with annoyed with this and found, nope, there's whole communities of people out there that are, are angry as hell about this. So <laughs> there are masses out there that, yeah. are to. again, and, I probably should find something different, but you know, well, an apple of all people, right? I mean, they put so much pride yeah. between, behind their UI, right? Their, their, their ability to design clean, yep. useful, applications, devices. I mean, that is like their DNA. So mm -hmm. what do you keep messing around with the podcast for? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, no, it, it just Music? felt like... I don't know. Have you found the same um, as any other app they have, like Apple Music? Apple Music has made some changes that were kind of wonky and annoying too. Mm -hmm. Not as, not quite as frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, they made a few, that they've made a few over time with that. that well, to me, too. they're getting a little overt on pushing their content. I mean, they put it very oh, yeah. up in front and it's like, yep. oh, hold on here. You know, I get it, right? You know, you've got your own curated program and content that you want to try to feed right, me but right. and it seems a lot more over than in the past but anyway yeah yeah and let's be honest we know that's a problem with you know apple and all these tech giants that prioritize sure. you know apple amazon all these companies prioritize their stuff obviously over everyone else's and when, yeah. when basically you have the stranglehold on your your particular marketplace i guess that makes sense but yeah yeah you know not cool yeah. though yeah, yeah, all yeah, right yeah. what's your next one well, then I'm going to stay a little bit. I'm going to go into the hardware side, but I'm going to talk about cords, okay. right? So charging cables. I've got a little bit of a tech beef. I've got two of them here that I'm going to okay. queue up for you. So I wear an Apple Watch. Uh, and so I was traveling recently and I forgot to bring my charger. Uh, got it. Okay. Yep, yep. So usually not a big deal though, right? So right. you can just go somewhere and get one. No, it is almost impossible to get an Apple Watch charging cord anywhere. So really? going to the airport, you know, the airport kiosk, they have, them right, right. you can get any kind of cord or any kind of earbud. They've got walls of them, right? right. Not a single Apple Watch uh, charger. So I go to the convenience store, same thing, right? I mean, these, are, right, these right. are high value or high profit, high margin items that any right. of these places, and people are willing to pay for it, right? Because you got to charge right. your devices. So yeah, I know you're charging me 5,000% markup, but you know, on this particular cord, but- but, I, but you need it, yeah. Convenience stores, didn't have it. Went to the hotel, 
Hotel has its own internal, you know, like little store. They've got they've got 15 different earbuds, every kind of other charging cable. They've got batteries. They've got power packs. They've got everything. They do right. not have an Apple Watch cord. So I ended up, since I was at this location for so long, I went on Amazon and had Amazon <laughs> deliver me one to the hotel. Okay. So a little beef on the Apple Watch cord. Look, people, we're out there. We travel. Sometimes we forget our cords. Would you drop in an Apple Watch cord if you own yeah, any yeah. of those? If you're in an yeah. airport kiosk or if you're in one of these, just pick one up. Yeah. My other beef on cords is that, you know, Apple, I love them to death, right? But I'm sick and tired of the different cables that I've got with all my different generations of Apple products, basically. Right. Right? I just got a new MacBook Pro. They went back to the magnetic uh, thing that they were doing way back when. It's like, what? Now I got to buy this cable again? Now, here's my tech Bravo, though. And I typically I don't, you know, like where these things are going, but I'm sure you read the yeah, EU yeah. has standardized the USB-C cable yep. as the cable any manufacturer of any electronics, so tablets, phones, computers, whatever it is, you right. have to use a USB-C cable to do that. And and I agree with why they've done it. You know, of course, they were making the argument, which is true, better for the environment. You know, now you don't have all these cables laying around. Right. And right. Just better continuity. Right. I mean, if yep. I'm whatever my device is, I think I normally would not be a Bravo on something like that. But I am so frustrated with cables right now that I'm giving <laughs> the EU a begrudging Bravo for standardizing the yep. USB-C. What do you think about that? Mr. I, I'm right there with you, man. I, I saw that same article. It was actually, I was going to maybe use that as a tech connecting at some point in the future. But as soon as you brought this up, I was like, all right, we got to talk about this. And I yeah. figured you were get, you were going there. I'm with you though. I, I, you know, and it's probably going to force Apple to, to standardize across the world anyway. And I just, I just feel like at this point, yeah, you're right. I think it should happen. I just, it is, it, it, it's wild to me that like when I go to plug stuff in around my house, you know, I've got to do one kind of charger for my, for my phone, another kind for my Mac. I guess the, well, the Mac's got a little bit of a stronger one, obviously. Like, uh, you know, if I'm plugging in uh, my son's tablet, I'm using a USB-C. You know, you're right. If the watch is on its own well, thing, like you get out of Apple's world, now you're into Android's world, and they've got different charging things. Exactly. And then, and then I get my little portable speaker, right, that I got as a gift, and that uses a different yep. charging. Yep. It's like, yep. what are we doing here, right? Yeah. yeah. There's no, there's just no good reason for that. And and I and and I know there's the, some of the detractors say, well, this is going to stifle innovation. Like, you know, if someone wants to create like the next generation of charging, whatever. I'm like, to my mind, the next generation of charging is more about batteries, not about the cable themselves right you know like there was a you know apple had a clear idea of what they were doing when they switched over to the lightning cables and es skewed the, the same type of cables that everyone else was using and they were and they even had their own different cable to begin with anyway the whole 10 pin thing or whatever it was like they you know they knew what they were doing and they understood the reasoning behind it it was all about you know, wrangling in some profits, you know, the same reason you're not weren't able to find the cable you needed specifically for your watch, because it is very specific to that device and nothing else. So I, yeah, this is one of those times I'm like, I'm, this is a good thing. It's a little contraction is not a bad thing. I hear thing you on the, on the competitive thing or innovation side, maybe seems a little weak because I don't, you know, yeah. it's not like we're transferring data or video signals right, or, right some encryption over these are power cables right? right i mean it's just it's that's all it has been you right. haven't shown any innovation in the last two decades except to say that they've gotten a little smaller or yours is just a slightly bit different than, right. than the other right. guys it's like no we're just it's not like saying out. like hey we're gonna ban hdmi and right. only stick to the old av cables and that's it the old you know yeah. uh, red yeah. yellow and white cables that's it that's sorry sorry hdmi sorry about that we don't need we don't need better quality you know because this this doesn't have anything to do with quality it's 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 mostly about just you know something proprietary that you can own and and own the profits on yeah i'm su i'm surprised somebody didn't bring well it's going to kill jobs it's going to kill whatever cuz we've got these manufacturing lines that are making these usb Whatever cables. Uh, uh, yeah, none, none of those are here in America, I doubt. I don't know that anyone here. I mean, other than maybe the third party suppliers, maybe. But Right, right. 
So there's my beef on cords. I need some Apple Watch cords out there. And come on, let's standardize around one. Yeah, you yeah, might see, there's you. another cable that I need, right? It's my Apple Watch cable. Yeah, and, you know, exactly. No, no, I got to have the magnetic thing that I'm charging right now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe when we finally get to this whole, you know, wi truly wireless charging where, you know, you don't even have to like plug stuff in anymore where it's, you know, or set something somewhere that's plugged in where it's just, you know, I don't know, somehow harnessing the electricity in the air. Oh, yeah. You know, right. Maybe once we get there, you know, you don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. But All like, right. Well, that, now, couldn't yes, come, yeah, that couldn't come soon enough for no, me. I'm telling I you. I agree. <laughs> All right. Here's my last one here. Uh, and, and we'll get to another one of yours. So. My this is a beef that I feel like has just become more and more prominent over the last few years, and I especially noticed it in the last couple of weeks. It is the length of episodes for streaming series. Oh, now this is ironic coming for me because I'm a big TV guy and I'm a big content guy, and you know, and I, you know, if I find something that's great to watch, I will watch it no matter how long it is. I don't care. But I've also noticed that a lot of series especially on the streaming services where, you know, they're not constrained by advertising. They're not constrained by time slots. They don't have to be concerned about, you know, fitting within an hour and, and then filling in 20 minutes worth of ads, or, you know, maybe you run a special episode that's an hour and a half, but you're still doing enough ads that the actual content's less than an hour. So now the streaming services are basically have, and, and, and also I think a lot of it has to do with the creators themselves. You're like, all right, you gave me this money to make a series, but I get to make the series my way. And if I decide that this episode is one hour and 10 minutes and the next week's episode is 45 minutes, you're just going to have to deal with that. And that's fine to an extent, except now you're starting to get to the point where I feel like there's too many shows that are just flat out doing long episodes all the way. Uh, Game of Thrones was one of the first examples of this. Game of Thrones in their last couple of seasons, almost every episode was an extended episode of an hour plus. And then, which again, like I loved the show, didn't mind. But you know, when you're, but Game of Thrones was also a series that people were watching live for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it came on at nine o'clock on a Sunday night. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to watch live and not have spoilers and be able to talk about it to your coworkers the next day, you had to stay up and we'll watch the show up. however late it went. Yeah. And if you're not someone who stays up that late, and granted, I do, but still, like my wife would struggle sometimes. You know, right, she was right. she's she gets tuckered out around 10 o'clock sometimes, like I'm ready for bed. And oh no, we got another 20 minutes in this episode. Oh, and we didn't start it until 9 15 because we're watching the delayed, you know, streaming or whatever. Well, the worst example that I've seen lately is I, I, I just recently finished the first half of season four of Stranger Things on Netflix. OK, yeah. And this is probably Netflix's most popular show at this point in time. You know, a lot of the other popular. Lots of accolades. Great. Everybody, all ages exactly. love this. And thing. It, it is a good show. I, I do yeah. very much enjoy it. Every single of the seven episodes that they that they put in part one of this season is over an hour long and some of them in the, like the hour 10 hour 15 range the last episode before the break was an hour and 40 minutes long it's basically a short, it's a short movie that is a movie now yes. get this also though so I, I i knew it was coming back in july for the rest of the episodes like they kind of broke it up and there's like okay the last episodes are gonna be in july i thought the last batch of episodes would be another i don't know five six seven episodes it's only two episodes. One of them is like an hour and a half. And the final episode of the season is supposed to be two hours and 20 minutes. That's a legit movie. That well, is that's, a legit that's a Marvel movie. movie. That's, that's Avengers Infinity War or Endgame or whatever. Like, you know, like why are like, why, 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 why can't you just split that into three episodes? And, Boy, so what's granted, the logic? What are we doing here? Why? I, I guess logic? part of it, I guess part of it is the idea that like, if you're binging a show, yeah, like, it doesn't matter. I see. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, like, you know, some of us like to have the natural breaks, you know, like, you know, again, I might only have time to watch one episode of a show in an evening. And, you know, and if I'm watching it with my wife or something, if it's something she likes. And by the time we get our son in bed, we get, you know, ready for the evening, get showers, work out, whatever it is we're doing, and finally have the time to sit down and watch something. If we, you know, if we look at it like, well, it's going to be an hour and a half. She sometimes will be like, I can't do this tonight. It's like, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Like, it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Or we're going to have to stop in the middle of the episode and finish it tomorrow or something. So, yeah, I, I, cause this is becoming, like I said, it's, you know, Stranger Things very clearly showed this to me. 
but it's it's an issue I've noticed in a lot of other streaming shows too. And the other thing too that I find is really weird right now is you've got a lot of streaming services that have like the commercial options where you know if you pay a little if you don't if you want to pay the more base price and not pay up, you get the option that has commercials. Mm-hmm. But what I find funny is they're they're designing these shows with the commercial break still in mind, even though they're not airing on traditional networks where they have to have commercials. So, which is, I guess I get it in a way where like, because it would look weird if you just suddenly interrupt the seam and shove a commercial in. Right. But at the same time, I noticed for a while because I used to have the the streaming subscription or the uh, the commercial subscription to Paramount Plus for the Star Trek stuff. And, and I think Hulu was doing this for a while too because I've got their commercial version where when you would go to an ad break, sometimes the ad breaks were not inserted properly. Like every episode, the ad break would start about 20 seconds maybe not even 20, like five seconds sooner than it should. So it, like a scene where it was supposed to have a natural break would suddenly get cut off a little bit mm-hmm. and, the, and the ads would suddenly run. And then you come back and you see like the last couple seconds of the previous scene before you move on to the next scene. And this was like a big issue, I think, on, on a couple platforms for a while. And they finally kind of resolved that a little bit. But at the same time, and, and I, I there's a part of me that has to sit there that the, the minute conspiracy theorist that occasionally will pop up in my head sits there and goes, just, are you doing it on purpose because you want people to to subscribe to the non-commercial version because yes. they get so annoyed with this? Yes. Hmm. Like, you just have to wonder about that. So, yeah. but, See, I thought you were going to go the inverse. I thought you were going to start saying that, complaining that these episodes are getting too short and they're like feeding our whatever, our minuscule uh, attention spans that apparently we all have. Well, I I do agree sometimes that kind of can happen like because I've noticed, especially Disney Plus, who has very much embraced the week to week model again. Mm -hmm. You know, after we went through this whole phase where people were like, no, I don't want week to week. I want to be able to sit down and binge it all on a weekend if I can. Right. I think Disney Plus has recognized, especially like with their Marvel and Star Wars shows, like, hey, there's still a. A, a, a an opportunity for water cooler talk and an opportunity for people to get hyped and talk for a week between episodes about a show. Maybe you, maybe not everybody watches it at the same exact time on the day that it's out, but we almost always will watch it within the first, you know, 24 to 48 hours of, of an episode being out. Yeah. And then there's all this time for internet dialogue and discussion and right. more hype for the next episode. And I think that's good. I think that's great because I do admit like that was one thing I feel like was lacking sometimes with, the new streaming model where it was all everything released all at once is if you didn't watch it all at once and some, or you did, and your friend is only watching a little bit at a time and takes three weeks. By the time you've both finished, you may be already done talking about it. You've already talked about it with five people. You don't want to talk about it with that friend anymore. Right. The, the yeah. moment has passed. Right. Whereas now, like there's a little bit more of that organic, like let's all talk about this show between episodes. And I think that's a good thing, yeah. but I will also acknowledge that I've noticed a few shows that very much, don't really but it's it's clear they could have done something a bit longer and have a bit more content they could have put in and they cut they, short they, yeah they find a cutting place for it because mm-hmm. they just want it because they want that option to be able to extend extend the conversation mm-hmm. for an extra week too so a series that maybe should have only been four or five episodes and could have had some like yeah. fat trimmed out yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe had maybe had an episode that was you know instead of running for 40 minutes ran for 50 minutes or something like now you start to see sometimes where it's like, all right, this didn't need to be a yeah. 10 episode maxi series. It could have been five episodes and, and okay. cut out of th- that dumb subplot. No, I'm with you. I would shake it up like that if I was that kind of a content producer, because when you read a book, not every chapter is the same length, right? I mean, either yeah. it's like shorter. Well, we got to fit this chapter in because we got to tell this part of the story and right, we don't right. need a lot of time, but but it's important to the plot or whatever, right? right. And so, yeah, so maybe it's a, it's a 17 minute, uh, you know, one. Yeah, interesting. Exactly. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, now, granted, I don't want like I don't want to go back to the, like the whole Quibi thing, which is long dead already. Where they were doing what, like I don't know, like six minute ep- six seven minute episodes or right. something. Like, yeah, no. I don't need I don't need that. I don't need that short. short. Yeah, I yeah. don't need that short. I don't need two hour episodes unless I know ahead of time. Like it's like you know. Here's my thing. Like, if you get to a series finale, like the last episode of a series, I expect that to be a big mega episode. That's fine. Maybe even the season finales, but. When you're basically like, no, every other episode is just going to randomly be an hour and a half. This one's going to be 40 minutes. That one's going to be an hour 50. This one's going to be two and a half hours just because we <laughs> felt like it. <laughs> that just that that blows me away. Oh, man. OK, so my maybe right, I, it goes a little bit into my last beef. 
are, are you like me and you, you're sick and tired of not having control over your content on social media? So, so here's, the, yeah. here's, you know, so I'm on Facebook or whatnot and like, I'll click into a video like this happened recently. I cl- clicked into a video of a guy on a motorcycle. It's kind of POV and he was going through, you know, some trails and stuff like that. Well, when I was growing up way back when, when I was 13, I used to be a BMX biker. And so it was right, kind of right. cool to see their POV and stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, I click off it. Well, wouldn't you know, now all that's showing up in my feed are these POVs of motorcycles. Like, no, yeah, I don't want yeah. any of this. You know, I, I'm sorry I clicked on the one, oh, gods of Facebook. <laughs> I really don't want to see this endlessly now for the rest of my life. But so that's my beat. This is your life, your life now, Bean. You, you are first person BMX biker guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> you the can't. social media gods have spoken. <laughs> They have spoken. So, so LinkedIn, so that there's my beef. But then the reason why I brought it up is because LinkedIn, from what I can tell, is the only one that's allowing you has made some recent changes to their algorithm and their actual tool that you, the user, has better control, greater control over the feeds and what's coming in on your feed, right? So right, you'll be right. able to like limit uh, you know, the kind of stuff that, that comes in you, with it, like, a, I don't want to see this option. Uh, you'll be right. able to, like, if you do want to see more from thought leaders or something like that, uh, that you feel is important, that's good. They're going to try diligently to give you less irrelevant news and updates and that, those kinds of things. So to me, this feels like a little bit of a right move in the sense that right. it's, it's alleviating that beef of, oh, my gosh, quit serving me this stuff. Or God forbid one of my children, <laughs> you know, is on one of my uh, social feeds at, at the time, too, and they click into whatever. Yeah. I'm yeah. Be watching that for the next whatever until the algorithm figures out that, well, yeah. that, maybe that was just an anomaly that he that he clicked on there. You see where I'm going with yeah. this? So anyway. Oh, I, I, I completely agree. I, I've told you before, I, I think we've even talked about it on an episode a long time ago. Like there are a couple of websites that I regularly f- frequent that for some reason have decided that I am a young to middle-aged woman <laughs> who is interested in the most fashionable, expensive new clothes that are on the market. <laughs> I don't know why. I promise you, I, I maybe I maybe I shop for something for my wife once or something, but it's I wouldn't be surprised. It's probably just because I share an IP address with her, right. and she looks up stuff like that sometimes. Yeah. It might yeah. be on some of these sites, but it just it it cracks me up because I will see this and I'll be like, all right, I'm like this this literally has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with this website that I'm on. It has nothing to do with any of my other activities. But for some reason, this particular site has planted that flag in. This is what this dude wants. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this person, yeah. this address, this person wants as much as much women's fashion as they can possibly get on this on this particular site. I don't see it on too many other sites like that. It's 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 very baffling to me. But it's interesting you mentioned this though because my wife has been she's always talked about how her phone is listening to her and her devices are listening to her. And a lot of people joke about that. And the you know the tech companies all say like, well, you don't do that. But I'm telling you, she has the, the most uncanny stuff appear on Facebook. After oh, we've had conversations, lying. I'm they're like, flat out don't lying. give they're me listening. that crap. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Like, it is very obvious when we're just I like there was one. I cannot remember what it was. That was just a few weeks ago. We literally were having a conversation about, oh, I know what it was. We were talking about fire pits and about getting ourselves an outdoor fire pit and finding something or another about it. We literally just did talking about it. She had not even started researching and no lie. Five minutes later, she's on Facebook. She goes, well, here's some ads for fire pits. I'm like, seriously, <laughs> like. Now, now, granted, I'm not on Facebook anymore, and I didn't really have that happen too much because right, I'm, right. I'm I'm so militant about my privacy settings and stuff like that anyway. Right, right. But I will say, since I'm not doing Facebook anymore, I'm mostly like my really only social media at this point is, I, I mean, I guess I'm on TikTok, but that's, I'm just a watcher on TikTok. I don't, you know, right. um, make TikToks, but like on Twitter, I've noticed Twitter has become almost as bad as Facebook used to be in the sense that every other time as you're flipping through Twitter, every other post is... A you might like this suggested yeah. topic oh, or sponsored post stuff. It's not even the the sponsored stuff where at least like the sponsor ones are like ads where you're just like, I clearly this is an ad and it's nothing to do with me. I'm scrolling on past, but I'll find myself reading stuff and be like, hmm, this is interesting. I didn't know I was, I was following this person. I'm like, oh, I'm not. This is just a suggested topic because I like Star Wars. Yeah. 
And the problem with that's becoming where I feel like there's times when I see more of that scrolling through my feed than I do the people that I'm actually trying to follow. Maybe we're finally getting to a tipping point. I hear you. I mean, it is I so obvious and so overt their algorithms and, yeah. and stuff like that. It's like, it's just meaningless uh, at this point in time. Yep. But, uh, and granted, Twitter's done the same thing, like at LinkedIn's and doing of sorts where they're like trying to give you a little control where you can click control, on something yeah. and say, mm-hmm, right. I don't want to see this. This yeah, is a topic right, I right, want. Right, right. But I just feel like you'd have to be so diligent about that and constantly doing that on a day-to-day basis that by the time, by the time you're done, you're know, doing that, you've kind of just lost all the joy of even thumbing through Twitter at that right. point. So, <laughs> All right. Those were some good beefs. I feel like we... I got some stuff off my chest. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Things that were bothering me a little bit. I, I agree. I'm, you know, I'm, I can be back to being more positive about about technology. <laughs> the stuff that angers me is out of the way. You know what, though, I will say when I was thinking about this last night and still like, oh, I got to come up with some beefs. I didn't feel like it was as easy for me to think them up as 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 I thought it might be. Like, right. like you know what, this wasn't as easy of an exercise as I thought, which tells me like maybe. Maybe I'm a little more on the positive side than I am on the negative. Okay. Side. Well, or we just need to do a better job of writing them down when they happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for tech beefs too. You know, <laughs> coming coming in November, and it'll just be like three hours, a three hour long episode. Both barrels, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, listen. Uh, as always, if you if you like our content, as I mentioned, if you have a beef you want to share, yeah. I would love to hear what your tech beefs are. I want to know from our audience what are you get frustrated about what in the world technology gets, you know, gets at you. So if you have something like that and you want to share it with us, uh, reach out to us. Uh, first of all, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, hit the like button, leave us a comment right now, go down there and leave a comment. Tell us what your biggest tech beef is. We'd love to see some of those. Uh, of course, as always, you can also reach us, uh, on, on Twitter. We're at tech and neck pod. I'm just sitting here complaining about Twitter, but yes, we're on there too. I try not to overwhelm with dumb content. I try to put some good stuff out there. And as always, you can also email us tech connect at bluestarring.com. All right. Hey, let's wrap things up here with, uh, normally we do the value to the VAR. And I think we kind of talked about this up front, this idea that like, Hey, you know what? Have these kind of conversations with your customers. It's good Absolutely. stuff to talk about. Yeah. And honestly, it's human. Thing, it's not a, it's, it is. And it's not a bad idea to know what the tech beefs are of your customers because it's possible that some of their beefs might be stuff that you actually could solve in some way. Ah, maybe I they don't realize that. that. Right. Or maybe they're complaining about something and like in the process reveal something. And you're like, hmm, I might actually have a solution for that. So brilliant. It doesn't, brilliant. It doesn't hurt to ask what people don't like about technology. Yeah. yeah uh, but sure. let's 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 wrap up with what's tech connect with you. This is this is where we're going to hopefully have a little more of a positive conversation <laughs> oh, about something. F- Maybe. I don't know. Sometimes I talk about the end of the world and robots murdering us all, but not today, I promise. Uh, this is where we talk about something for the world of tech, science, innovation, business that's got our attention, caught our eye. Dean, what is tech connecting with you this week? Here's my headline, dude. MasterCard begins pilot of its facial recognition payment system in Brazil, kind of connecting into our world a little bit here. Okay. Technology would allow customers to check out with a smile or a glance. So what do you think here? So they're only doing it, MasterCard's only doing this in Brazil, but the whole idea here is like, you know, gone would be the days of an actual card or even, you know, just a, the, the um, tap and swipe or the NF, right, right. right? Just all that would go away. All you need is a little facial recognition. Okay. Uh, to to approve. shades of minority report here a little bit, <laughs> but I'm with you there. But it's actually coming. It's only, it's actually going to be a reality right. here. I guess they're doing it. Why they chose Brazil again? I don't I don't get it. But uh, <laughs> it's a it's a, like a five grocery store chain down in Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. That's that's where they're going to launch this later this year. You could sign up for it. And then uh, upon exiting this grocery, all you have to do is give a facial recognition and I guess some kind of smile or something that, that, that shows that you approve it. I did. The, the okay. That's a, that's a good that. question. Yeah. Because I, as soon as you mentioned, I'm like, well, what's to stop someone from just like, you know, I don't know, holding something up as you walk by and catching your profile and charging you for something. But yeah. there's gotta be a certain facial motion. If it, look, if that's the case, I'm going to sign it with one. It's like, ah, you know, like, <laughs> Oh, and you know all the kids. I'm going to make it as weird, as goofy as possible. Absolutely. We'll do stupid stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know. And maybe, what was the movie you referenced? Maybe we are getting uh, Minority it. Report. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that was, a, that was an eye thing. That was like a scan. Retinal scan. Retinal yeah, scan. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so right. anyway, so, you know, I thought the Apple Watch was whiz bang and just being able to tap and right, go over right, right. No, just glance at it, maybe give it a little wink. And that's, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what it says. Yeah, you're good to go. 
Yeah, I could see uh, this. Like, I could, I could see some value in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what's tech connecting okay. with you? All right, so I have a TV series to talk about. Um, you might have seen my comments on this. We we have this monthly thing as part of our base camp of you know where we keep track of our projects and what we've been working on and stuff. And oh, right. Cordy threw Cordy threw this random question in there that every month of the first Monday of the month pops up and asks, "What books have you been reading lately?" Right. And I always scoff at it because I'm like, "Yeah, I barely read enough anymore. I you know I <laughs> I have substituted reading for other things in life, unfortunately, and I don't read as much as I used to or should." But I always catch people up like, hey, here's all the cool TV and movies that I've been watching if you want to check any of this stuff out. Well, the one I just recently finished, it's been out for a few months now. I think it came out in early spring on Apple TV Plus. Now, not not the Apple TV device, the oh, box set right. top, yeah, yeah, yeah. but their actual streaming service, which mostly is known for Ted Lasso at this point. That's probably what yeah, most people right. have seen or watched on it. All right. There's a new show on it, though, called Severance. And I cannot recommend this show highly enough, especially really? for anyone in the world of tech or business. I'm going to give you the quick premise here. So in this show, Adam Scott of uh, Parks and Rec and Party Down fame, if you've ever seen those, um, it, it plays a, a guy named Mark who works for a company called Lumen. And basically the big premise of this is when he goes to work, Lumen has installed a chip in his head that that creates a concept called severance, where his memories and his understanding and his knowledge of life outside and inside of the business are completely compartmentalized and separate. This is cool. I like it so, so far. So when he's out in the re- in the regular world living his daily life, he only knows his outside life. He doesn't know anything of what he does at work. He doesn't know what his job is. He just knows that he works there. When he goes to Lumen, he changes clothes, puts on a badge, leaves personal effects behind, goes down an elevator and somewhere during the ride down, his personality switches over to that of another Mark, you know, who only knows life at Lumen and has only, as far as he knows, existed in, in the reality and world of Lumen, knows his job. But here's the thing is Lumen is a very strange place. The work that they're doing makes zero sense. They're using old school technology, old school types of computers. The, the hallways are almost like a labyrinth. Departments are separated from one another and rarely allowed to interact. There's only four people working in his department. He's just got a new employee that just came on board that he's he's trying to teach her and train her. Oh, she so it's like to, business in the 60s. Yeah, she's trying to cope with like suddenly, you know, what's happened to her and that she suddenly literally woke up, you know, in a world, in a life that she doesn't even know or understand. So it's 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 a fascinating series. There's a lot of mystery to it. It's got a it's got a lot of dark comedy to it also. So it's you know it's, I think it's nine episodes of first season, and it's one of those shows. I normally don't like to tell people about shows like well stick with it until this point and then you'll be hooked. You'll be hooked from the beginning. It's it's a very fascinating, fun and entertaining show from the beginning. But when you get to the last one or two episodes, especially the last episode, there's so much game changing stuff that happens. Oh, as nice. soon as we finished it, my wife and I looked at each other and said, I want another season right now. <laughs> I want to know what happens next. Nice. Everything has just changed. And I, I just find it very interesting because I think there's there's kind of three interesting commentaries going on in the show. One is about big tech in general and mm-hmm. you know, the overreach of big tech because you get some glimpses in the outside world of that people are not particularly fond of this. Right, you know, right. There's, there's, there's some interest in the government stepping in and people are protesting the whole severance concept or whatever. Right, right. So there's some interesting you know, discussion about big tech kind of going on there. There's a lot of stuff about corporate interests too, if you think about it, like this idea of like, would corporations like that idea of being able to say to you, hey, none of the distractions of real life are allowed to enter into our office. You, only, you. Exist, yeah, yeah, you yeah. only exist as our you know, steadfast employee when you're here. Right. Um, so there's that. But then there's also like, you know, I feel like there's also kind of an interesting commentary about our current world in this whole work from home environment we've been living in for the last few years where, you know, we've, we've become so comfortable with working outside of an office now. And then you're talking about a, a company here that wants to literally trap someone's, a, an entire personality in an office. In an That's office. the thing. Like at first, like, cause I think at first you watch the show and your first couple episodes, you're like, man, this would be kind of cool. Like if my only, I only knew all the good stuff of life. I only knew all of my off time. Like I was, right, only, right, 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 you know, right. it was, it was only about what I do in my free you time. Burdened with like work. At, at yeah, home. exactly. You don't have to worry about it. You're yeah. not thinking about it. You're not checking right. your email at night, but then when you stop and realize, okay, but, but your other personality, that other <laughs> self of you is literally trapped at work 
they only like when they, they leave at the end of the day and go up that elevator, the next thing they know, the next thing they're conscious of is that elevator going right back down and the doors opening and you're back at work. Yeah, but like, there's even a discussion about that. Anyway, like, you know, right. So you, you well, are yeah. the bad part, right? Yeah, I guess. But man, like, so there's, there's just, there's a lot of fascinating stuff at work in this show. I, I, it's one of those things. If you, if you have that opportunity to get like the Apple TV plus free for a few months, you know, from, yeah, like, do a it device and watch whatever, Got it. it. Watch that. Watch Ted Lasso too, if you want, but like, this is, it's worth it just for this show alone. It's like I said, it's nine episodes. You'll breeze through it fairly quickly. But man, it's it's. Some good I'm stuff. watching. I'm watching. You got me. Highly recommend it. <laughs> yeah, definitely do because I don't know anybody else has watched this yet other than my wife, and I would love to talk about this show. <laughs> so, all right, I think that does it for us. We've we've aired our beefs. Yes, uh, we've uh, we've decided what really frustrates us, but we found some stuff that still excites us and interests us as well. Next week, we'll get back to some of the 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 big cool tech in our industry that you know that is going places that doesn't make us angry. Hopefully, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, until then, it is time for us to unplug. Until next time, um, you know, maybe um, maybe make sure you pack extra charging cables. You yeah, know, when you go on the road. Yeah, team, but yeah that'd be. You're good just going to have to have three of everything now, so you always remember to take one with you. Oh <laughs> man, no doubt. <laughs> and uh, and demand that your streaming services shorten their episodes. There you go. Stay connected. Second Act Podcast is brought to you by ELO. Uh, if you're looking to meet the needs of both hospitality retail customers and their employees, as well as their busy on the go customers, I'm assuming that's what you were trying to do. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. What we're all kind of here for is to help yeah. them out. Well, <laughs> introducing the new ELO M60 Pay, a mobile POS computer designed to support everyday business. It's a rugged enterprise grade all in one device with a six inch HD touch display, Android 10 OS, Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 octa core processor, and all of the requisite connectivity options. Boom. Now, I, you know, we know that I actively avoid shopping when I can and yes. I don't really go to restaurants a lot yes. of the world, But I'll tell you though, if someone comes up to me and has these convenient options for payment and for taking care of me. Even better. It's, it's probably going to make me a loyal customer and someone who wants to revisit you. My wife and I talk about this all the time with restaurants is how annoyed we are if we go to a restaurant and you get to the, you're done with your meal. Yep. You have to sit there and wait for someone to come take yep. your payment, right. go to the back, process yeah. it, stop at six tables. You watch them stopping at six tables before they get back to you just to give you your credit card back. I'm here. I'm right here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. Okay. All right. I want to get out of there. I want to go home. Well, what really puts the M60 above other mobile computers for productivity is that it also offers these integrated payment capabilities to speed customers along wherever they are. The M60 is equipped for dip, tap, and swipe. So that means it accepts EMV cards with chips, NFC contactless payments for cards or mobile devices, and the traditional Magstrap cards, uh, cards as well, if anyone still actually uses those. Uh, <laughs> perfect for table side service, line busting, curbside pickup, anywhere your customers need to accept payments. Uh, honestly, if I was shopping you somewhere, like I said, with and someone came up to me with the M60 in hand, Absolutely. took my payment, and I got to walk out the door immediately right after they took my payment, I would be ecstatic. I would be a, yep. I, I, it, would, it would make me want to come back there again. Well, and that's what this thing is enabling. I mean, imagine going into your small hardware store, picking up a can of whatever stain that you need to do for that weekend. Yep. Instead of going all the way up to the cash register or whatnot, if an associate's right there with one of these M60s with a payment, boom, they just scan yeah. it, the payment right there, you're out the door, baby. There you go. That's what retailing's getting to. That's a great point. All right. Well, to learn more about these amazing, these, this amazing new device, check out the link in the show notes or contact the Blue Star Evo team. Tech Neck Podcast is brought to you by Zebra. All right, Dean, we, we aired a lot of tech beefs, and sometimes we've had some beefs about marketing. Yes. About how people market stuff. And you got that right. Bad emails, yep. bad websites, yes. bad not stuff that's not mobile friendly. You can right? clearly tell when people think they know how to market, but they don't really know how to market. Exactly. So create an effective marketing pieces that get attention and grow your sales pipeline. It doesn't have to be a solo mission, though. Ooh. Zebra's here to help with their new and improved co-marketing builder tool. Nice. Redesigned based on input from their partner community, 
Users now have the ability to customize single assets or entire campaigns, more levels of customization than ever before, easy access to their new partner identifier and certificate, hundreds of new assets to use and an intuitive interface. I mean, what more are you gonna need at this point? Right, that's all you need, boom. Exactly, available free of charge to Zebra Partner Connect members. You just gotta be a Partner Connect member and you have free access to this. This good self stuff, by the way. I mean, this is like high exactly. quality stuff, yeah. It's a self-service co-marketing platform that enables you to customize Zebra marketing and sales tools with your brand. Spec sheets, social media content, flyers and brochures, web banners, emails, and more. So if you're a Tech Connect part or a Zebra Partner Connect member, Tech Connect member, that's great too. Uh, check out the link in the show notes to access the co-marketing tool. If you're not a member, what are you waiting for? Contact our Blue Star Zebra team to get signed up. 